and sisters be careful when you are affected by something number one it may not be jinn it may not be black magic remember that a lot of the times we are so weak anything happens oh, someone did something you know why my eye is twitching have you heard that one my eye is twitching you know my my leg is moving it must be a lack of vitamin b my brother <laughs> allahu akbar it must be a lack of vitamin D, the way you have, I'm so tired every day. I'm this, there might be extra candida in your body. You know, they call it the fungal infection of the belly. A little bit too much. So now you have too much sugar, too much of what to, notice I said sugar in a Malay accent. Have you noticed that? <laughs> but you have too much of all of these things. Subhanallah, you've got, for example, a lot of yeast in your body. Too much yeast and sugar. Oh, you've got a problem. Too much coke, too much of whatever else. You know, you feel lazy. Cut out your sugars. Have something. When I say cut out, I mean minimize. Have something healthy. Eat a little bit less. Don't eat so much. When you fill your belly with so much of, you know, what do they call it? The, the food that they have, you know, roti chennai and whatever else. A lot of it, subhanallah. You have so much of it. What happens? MashaAllah, uh, alhamdulillah. Uh, uh, Allahu Akbar. And then you want to blame the jinn. Why? I'm so lazy. Your jinn is, you just need to control it, man. You know, some people eat too little, they have a jinn. Some people eat too much, they have a jinn. That is why be balanced. Be in the center. My brothers and sisters, the moral of what I'm saying, don't blame everything on the jinn. Sometimes it's just a health matter. Sometimes you have a psychological problem, to be honest with you. Because why? You're thinking too much. Your Iman is weak. That's why you are suffering. Your, when your Iman is weak, you know what happens? You start thinking, what's going to happen to me, my future? You know, I'm 23, I'm not yet married. What's going to happen? And you're sitting at night and worrying. If worrying got you married, we'd all have four wives. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Yes. You stop worrying in that way. Worrying never solves a problem. Trust me, lay your trust in Allah. Do what you can in your capacity. Go out and try as hard as you can. Never ever leave any stone unturned when it comes to your effort and leave the rest in the hands of Allah. Don't worry, sleep like a log, mashallah, for as long as you get up for Salat and Fajr. But that's the way forward. The problem with us, you can't have a job. Someone's done magic on me. Let's go away. Let's go to these fortune tellers, magicians. You can call them what you want. People who engage in superstitious activity. Islam is the fastest growing religion on earth because the, the Quran and the Sunnah in reality are logical. They make sense. The minute you see superstition, the people won't want to accept Islam. Imagine someone wants to accept Islam and you tell them when you have a problem, you must just go to these people. They will dangle an elastic band for, uh, by your nose and make you sneeze three times. And you'll be okay. <laughs> it happened to me and I was okay. How were you okay? You felt okay when you sneezed perhaps, but that was the devil making you feel okay because he wanted to insult Allah. And he tells Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look, <laughs> he laughs at us. Look at this guy. I made a fool of him. Do you know? I made a fool of him. I made him do something pretending or thinking that he's going to be cured through that. And when you told him I am a Shafi, he just turned away from that. What does Ibrahim alayhi salam say? When I become sick, it is he, Allah alone, who is the owner of cure. He will cure me. I don't turn to anything else. So keep on making dua. One might ask, okay, if I want to protect myself from these things, what do I do? Number one, every morning and evening, put a metal armor around you. How do you put that around you? You don't want to be affected by jinn. You don't want to be affected by black magic. I told you one is the person who participates in it. He has disbelieved in Allah. If a person goes to a fortune teller to ask him a question out of curiosity, that means I don't want to believe them, but I say, I'm just going for the fun of it. The hadith in Sahih Muslim says, Allah will not accept his salah for 40 days. You go to a fortune teller. Okay, right. Tell me my fortune. I'm just joking. I just want to see what he says. No, no, no. I didn't believe in it. I just want to see. Allah says, even if you just wanted to see what he said, your salah is not accepted for 40 days. It's a hadith in Sahih Muslim by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Subhanallah. How come? 
Now here comes a young man not reading Salah. Why are you not reading Salah? Oh, I'm off. What do you mean you're off? Are you a woman? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, 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 I went to a magician. Now 40 days, I'm just off, you know. <laughs> I, I... Astaghfirullah. That is not the meaning of the hadith. The meaning of the hadith is that for 40 days, the reward of your Salah is not achieved. You have to read it. You have to fulfill it. If you don't fulfill your Salah, you will be punished. And when you fulfill it, because you did something evil, the reward of it is not there. Similar to a person who's drunk alcohol or something intoxicating. The hadith says 40 days Salah is not accepted, which means the reward of the Salah will not get to you. It's like payment of a punishment. Your salary is being deducted. You still have to go to work. If you don't go, you're not going to get a salary. You have to go to work. You will get a salary, but it's deducted as a fine for something you did that was bad. So if you go for fun to a fortune teller, 40 days Salah, you've messed up and you need to still engage in Toba. Why? I was just engaging in fun. Well, I tell you when people see you there, they will go there seriously. No one knew that you were there for fun. So you're not allowed to go there even for fun. It's like a guy going to the nightclub, subhanallah. And he's there every night and he tells me, I'm just going there for fun to check what's happening. Check what's happening. Who are you trying to fool? Who are you trying to fool? And the problem with the nightclub, you go twice, thrice to check what's happening. The fourth time they will be seeing what's happening with you. And if you go to a fortune teller and you believe what he told you, anyone who claims to know the unseen, when you believe what they tell you, you know what Muhammad says? Firstly, we need to know that Allah is the owner of the unseen. He has given information of the unseen to Muhammad as per his discretion, but through revelation, subhanallah. And at the same time, anyone else who claims to know the unseen, throw it out. Throw it out. Whoever goes to a fortune teller, one who claims to know things of the unseen and believes what he or she was told, Muhammad says he has disbelieved in what Muhammad brought. That means the Quran and the Sunnah. He has disbelieved. So how can you believe a fortune teller? How can you go to the fortune tellers? They want to tell you what's lying in the future. They are lying themselves about the future. So how should I protect myself from those who intend to harm me? Sometimes I can be affected by a jinn because I am unclean myself. I'm not interested in prayer. I'm not interested in the proper dress code. I'm not interested in you know, things that I'm supposed to be doing. I have no link with the Quran, no link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then I get affected by the jinn because my life is dark anyway. I lead such a dark life, subhanallah. And now the darkness, I'm affected. Not necessarily someone did something, but it's my lifestyle. Every day I'm in the club, I become sick. Person on drugs, they get affected by the jinn also at a certain time. Why? Because their life is full of disobedience of Allah every day, day in, day out. So, and what do they become? They become the comrades of the devil. Whoever turns away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the remembrance of the most merciful, we appoint for them a devil to be their companion. The devil becomes a companion of such a person. Why? They don't have good companions. But when people inflict you with harm and you have, for example, been affected by black magic and so on, there is a cure. In fact, we should be protecting ourselves before we are affected. If you are affected, you are to blame. Why didn't you protect yourself by the protection taught by Muhammad He taught you how to protect yourself. Why did you not protect yourself? Simple. What did he say? Ayatul Kursi, morning and evening. If possible, after every prayer. Morning thrice, in the evening thrice. After Fajr, after Salatul Maghrib. The problem is we didn't get up for Fajr and we couldn't, bother to be, we couldn't be bothered to read our Maghrib. That's the problem. Ayatul Kursi is a verse in the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah. We read it thrice. Take your time. It will take you five minutes to do what I'm telling you. Five minutes in the morning or ten, 
and five minutes or 10 in the evening. A total of not more than 20 to 24 minutes in 24 hours. To do what? To protect yourself. From who? From the devil. From everything evil. So, then you read the Mu'awwidat, the last verses of the Quran. The last two surahs of the Quran, minimum two, you could read three. We read them thrice each, morning and evening. Similarly, you ask Allah's protection using the words that were used by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I seek the protection of Allah. I seek refuge in all the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil that he has created. Oh Allah, can you protect me from all the evil that you've created? We repeat that dua thrice. Bismillah in the name of Allah. Alladhi la yadurru ma asmihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fi samai wa huwa sami'ul alim. In the name of Allah. By whose name nothing can harm me in the skies or the earth. He is all hearing, all knowing. That dua repeated thrice, morning and evening. And then see what happens. Nothing will come close to you. Then if something happens to you, it's definitely not connected to the jinn and it's not connected to any of these superstitious things. It's perhaps just a medical problem. The problem with us, we don't read this. Morning comes, we just get up and rush to work. There was no salah and nothing happened. Evening comes, we couldn't be bothered about anything. Even if you have been affected, continue to read these duas. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was affected at one stage according to many ahadith that make mention of it. Why? Not because he deserved it, astaghfirullah, but because Allah wanted to teach us a lesson to say when something like this happens to you, if it happened to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, look at how he dealt with it. Did he go to people to say this and to say that? No. He struggled for 30 days. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the last two surahs of the Quran, Falak and Nas, as a result of what happened. There was a man known as Labid ibn al-Asam al-Yahudi, who took the hair of the Prophet sallallahu and tied it into knots and put it on a comb and tied it in knots and blew into it. This is why anyone who ties the knots and blows into the knots has engaged in black magic. Be careful. It removes you from the fold of Islam. But don't do something un-Islamic to save yourself. What else is beneficial? We have the leaf of the cedar tree. The leaf of the cedar tree. You can crush it. You can bathe with that water. You can even drink that water. It is said to be healthy, beneficial. You know, today a lot of the people have green tea. They take the leaves of a tree. They take green tea, not green tree. And so, so many different types of drinks. But at the same time, some of these are really beneficial, not only for your health, even for your spiritual self. You know, when you have a strong body, when you are healthy, you are a stronger believer at the same time. Then we have the date. Dates are very healthy, rich in iron. There is a specific date known as Ajwa. The Hadith makes mention of it. It's a small round black date. It's not so sweet. If you have seven of those every morning, the hadith says you'll be cured from all disease and sickness and protected from magic and so on. Similarly, raw honey is absolutely beneficial. Did you know that? Similarly, extra virgin olive oil cold pressed is very healthy for you. You can either rub it, you can have a little bit of it. You can exchange the cooking oil that you might be using for that. You can have it in your salad. You can have it in whatever way it is beneficial from the hadith. Similarly, it, when you look at the water of Zamzam, if you have some of it, have a little bit of it now and again. It's powerful. It will, it will help you in every single way. There is something known as the black seed, Habbatu Sauda. Have it. There is a way of having it either in the oil form, very little of it, or in the little grains that you have, very few of them. You can rub it as well. Very slightly, not much of that. It's very strong. But that helps you. It's from the hadith. Habbatu Sauda has shifa and cure in it, this black seed. Another powerful way of curing yourself is cupping. You know what is cupping? Subhanallah, hijama. That's what it's known as. To remove the dirty blood from your body by creating small cuts in a professional way. Don't just do a back alley job. Get it done properly. 
try and learn about the days it's supposed to be done, the odd nights to the second half of the, the Islamic month or the lunar calendar. It's better. So these are some of the ways of curing yourself. It's important for us to know this because you continue doing this and you will find the eradication of the effects of the magic on you. You will find slowly but surely you will be healed. With hijama, they say it is so helpful, it can actually chase away a jinn if you've been possessed by a jinn. It can actually do that for you. And then you need to engage in a lot of dua. Call out to Allah, cry to Allah, call out to Him a lot. Sometimes Allah allows you to be affected because He wants you to soften up to Him. You have people who are hard, nothing stops them. They are tyrant, they are you know, people who are too, too bent in their dirty ways and habits and Allah wants to soften them. They are too proud and arrogant and, and then they are bashed with something of this nature. They have no option but to cry to Allah to cure them. No option. Who was that? That was Allah softening you. So become soft. You know, when Allah tests you and you become softened, it's a very good sign. It's a very good sign. But when Allah tests you and you become even harder, it's the worst thing that you could do. Then we have the recitation of the Quran at large. Surah Al-Baqarah in particular is powerful against the devil. Did you know that? The last few verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. Going to the end. You will find they are powerful. They are made mention of in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La al-batala. You know the shaitan do not enter a house where Surah Al-Baqarah is read. So learn to read it. People say, can I just put on a cassette or CD and so on the radio and whatever that may help you. But the true help will come when you yourself take the time to sit down and read, sit down and read. Similarly, your adhkar, how many times do you praise Allah in the day? How many of us, the day passes and we haven't said, Oh Allah, I love you. Oh Allah, I praise you. All praise is due to you, Oh Allah. What, have, what haven't you blessed me with? Oh Allah, I love you. How many of us have said that? How many of us have actually said, Subhanallah, thinking about it? Just when you're walking, just when you're doing anything, Alhamdulillah. You sit and you look at the food and you start thinking of the poor people across the globe. You know, you turn the tap on the shower here at this hotel, for example, and you know, it is so, so beautiful that a person who's not conscious of Allah might just want to stay there for an hour. Because why? A lovely shower, the pressure of the water, the temperature. When you start thinking about people who haven't even seen that type of water in the last 10 years, you quickly turn it off. You say, oh Allah, I thank you. You allowed me to bath. I didn't waste time. Five minutes, I was out. Allah, I thank you. There are people who haven't had that. Look at the clothing you have. There are people who can't afford the people who don't have. Have you ever said, Alhamdulillah, ya Allah, you gave me clothing, Alhamdulillah, and walk away. Or while you're walking. That will protect you from the devil because when the devil knows you are connected to Allah, the devil moves away. The closer you are to Allah, the further you will be from the devil. It's like a seesaw relationship. Do you know that? You cannot be close to the devil and to Allah at the same time. You cannot. You are either close to Allah, so you are away from the devil or vice versa. You've got to choose. There is another type of magic. What is it? The first type of magic is where you are separated from someone. Another type of magic is where you are brought close to someone so close. You know, when people go, they cannot marry. Like I started off by saying, you cannot marry this person because they are married. So they go to some of these witch doctors and they say, this is what I want. They say, okay, you do this, you do that. And some of them pretend to be so pious. I don't take money. I just don't take money. I don't take money. But they use the jinn to enter into your bloodstream. Some people don't have a problem when they visit a witch doctor. The witch doctor inflicts them with a problem. Be careful. Did you hear that? Some people don't have a problem when they visit these people. They are inflicted with a problem. They give you this to do and that to do. And like I've said in the past, they'll tell you to cut so many lemons and to, you to take rose petals from the yellow rose and the red rose and to come. I know of a person who was told to go to the crossroads and start bathing naked with water at 12 o'clock at night. And they were considering doing that. Whew. Allahu Akbar. That's how desperate we become. So they will go to this witch doctor and say, I want to marry this woman. He says, so what's wrong? Well, she's married. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. So he says, no problem. I will separate them. And I will make sure 
that she loves you and she gets to you and so on they can't do anything they create chaos you know the disasters that are caused from this type of activity number one is fear shaitan will instill in you fear of everything besides allah number two doubt you start doubting your spouse you doubt this person anything that happens you are in doubt because your iman is weak that's why your iman becomes so weak that you start doubting your family members your cousins your relatives your uncles your aunts your in-laws your greater family people are jealous of me nobody's jealous of you nobody's jealous to be honest with you a lot of the times people might yes look at you and say mashallah you've got and so on but they haven't gone as far as you think they have and if they have then it's so dirty but there is a way of curing and we spoke about that so now there is a problem in that person's home there is a problem with you as well and that person ends up with a divorce husband and wife were getting along suddenly they don't and suddenly this person starts inclining towards you how did you achieve that what did you try to do why did you want to do it why do you want to tamper with all this where do they get their information from how do they do all this it's from the jinn it's from the devil this is something dirty. It is something we are not supposed to be participating in. It is there. It exists. It is possible. But you lose your heaven. You lose your Jannah. You either have something you want for five minutes in this world or for five years, and you lose your entire hereafter, which is everlasting, or you bear sabr with what Allah has tested you with, and you achieve your entire hereafter, which is eternity. The choice is yours. My brothers and sisters, whatever we've said this today, this morning has been extremely important, very important. But this is only the tip of the iceberg. It is a major sin to participate in witchcraft. It is a major sin to go to those who tell fortune, even if it means by your hands or, you know, horoscope or anything else, it is a major sin. You are not allowed to participate and you're not allowed to believe. Don't even read it. It's not true. People say, no, I believe it is true. It's not true. Allah, make dua to him. It weakens your iman. It weakens it and makes it flat. And then you read salah, you achieve nothing by it. Why? Because your heart is not connected to Allah. It's connected to everything besides Allah. You're just paying lip service. Like I've said in the past, people come for Jum'ah salah because they don't want to be seen not being there or they don't want to not be seen at the masjid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness.